This patient is around 30 years old and he sustained crush injury on the right hand involving all the fingers except thumb and he now recovered but he still have some rigidity uh, in fingers there is pain little swelling also so i think he is a case of crps type 1 this acute type crps right so this i am going to uh, 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 correct it by giving the the brachial plexus block is very low dilution block so i want to give relief to this patient from crps by using dual blocks and the blocks i am performing this my own technique of supraclavicular interscanly supra omohyoid block and infra omohyoid infraclavicular block so first block is supraclavicular second block is infraclavicular supraclavicular block i will demonstrate the basic anatomical landmark this is the space of burn or supraesternal notch this i have marked is the sternal domestoid and uh, when we put my finger on the lateral aspect of the lateral border of the sternal domestoid i can roll the finger now the, my tip is over the scalenus anticus roll it laterally you will feel a little groove and this groove is in between the scalenus anticus and the scalenus medius we when we uh, roll my finger down in interscanny cleft i can feel some sort of oblique running structure this is the inferior valley of omohyoid now this interscanny triangle is divided into two one is the lower part in below omohyoid and above omohyoid so i will demonstrate the brachial block through the uh, interscanny cleft above the omohyoid supra omohyoid uh, interscanny cleft block and in another block i will perform and i will demonstrate from below the clavicle okay because of some anatomical variations the ulnar nerve is not approachable the ulnar components are not approachable by the supraclavicular block in spite of the fact that you give more than 30 percent 30 sorry 30 ml of the local anesthetization this uh, this can spare the ulnar distribution so for that i have to supplement from below the clavicle now for this since this is not for the surgery purpose in the upper extremity and this is basically just to relieve from the crps and, and this is also associated with the sympathetic block so in this 20 ml syringe i have taken 3 ml 2% lidocaine 3 ml 0.5% 0.5% bpb cane the rest 14 ml i have taken the normal saline okay so now i will perform the this only the sterile area so from here i am going to ek bit sui lag rahi chuti si so now you can also notice that this external jugular vein is also gives an hint uh, regarding the interscanny cleft sometime in in thick neck this landmark may help in identifying identifying the interscanny cleft so now put the finger here and now i can feel so here i am injecting ek sui lagi bete lagi kelani always aspirate before injection at once the needle open up the potential space into actual space so rotate the syringe aspirate and then inject and always keep watch on the monitor if there is sudden rise of the pulse that indicates uh, the possibility of the accidental intravascular injection Okay. So just go slow. Our aim is not to elicit paresthesia. Don't try to touch the nerves. It gives little trouble to the patient. It's always better to open up the potential facial space by the spreading solution, local anesthetic solution, and then gradually advance the needle here. Aspirate, then only you inject. Now go down, down, pull the syringe, inject, aspirate, inject, rotate. rotate aspirate then inject now do little puckering this because i am using 1 and 1/2 inch long needle by puckering you can increase the effective depth of the needle so there should not be any discomfort no paresthesia so i am just utilizing the space facial sheath around the <coughs> brachial plexus 
So the dilution, the, the solution is very dilute, very very dilute. This is not going to block the motor nerves, but it is more of a sensory as well as as well as sympathetic block. And after completing this block, I will ask the patient to do physiotherapy and exercise. Now I have completed this. Now I am going to remove the needle. Just check for the regurgitation and remove the syringe. Remove the needle and just massage this area. Clavicular supra omohyde interscanny block. That is my own technique. And this dilution I have used is very less. Only 3 ml of lidocaine, 2 percent, and 3 ml of bibivacaine. And in this infraculture approach, which I am going to demonstrate, demonstrate, I have taken 2 ml of 2 percent lidocaine with adenine and 2 ml of uh, 0.5 percent bibivacaine, and rest rest amount of 12 ml I have taken uh, normal saline. Right? Now, if you increase the concentration here in either of the block, this will anesthetize whole of the upper limb, whole of the upper limb. Now, this approach will anesthetize the ipsilateral side of the neck, the shoulder, the clavicle and the upper limb. If I use only this one, this will anesthetize uh, the, the shoulder and, and of course the upper extremity rather than the neck. So now from here, now from here, just palpate the clavicle and insert the needle because this area already get anesthetized by the previous block. It means he cannot feel any pain in the lower part. Now, strike the lower part of the, the clavicle and go just deep to it in the direction of the interscanny plant. Right? Now, here I start injecting after aspiration. Advance the needle, aspirate before injection, move in the direction of the interscanny plant. In the aspirate, then inject, aspirate, then inject. So go slowly and keep watch on the pulse. Right? Go deep down. I am doing the puckering. This effectively increases the depth of the tip of the needle. So now you can notice here. So this is the dual block of the brachial plexus. The total amount in this patient using both the techniques I have used uh, 5 ml of BP became 0.5 percent and 5 ml of jalocan with adeline. And you can notice this area is ballooning. It indicates that the seeds around the brachial plexus get expanded. See, you can notice this area here. Now this block is complete. So we have demonstrated both the blocks. Patient can feel only a small prick here. After blocking this, this area gets anesthetized. This is supplied by the uh, this intraclavicular nerve. So from here, if I prick, he cannot feel any pain, full sensation of the pain needle. So this tool block I have given. Now after waiting for 5 to 10 minutes, I will show you the, the, the results of these blocks in the upper limbs. So uh, this is the same patient and uh, this is about 10 minutes past both the block. You can notice here two punctures, supraclavicular and infraclavicular, they are the two punctures. And here you can notice that he has, he had crust injury in all the four fingers. This is about one month post injury. The, everything has healed up. But there is stiffness, there is edema as compared to normal side. Motiban karo karo, now, so this is quite painful. So because of this problem, I have given very low dilution block. Total amount I have consumed is 5 ml, 0.5% BPB cane and 5 ml, 2% lidocaine with adeline. So from these two blocks, now, is quote how today? Let us see the sensory and the monitor block. Is quote how? Kya lagta hai? Oh. He is unable to lift this leg. It means more than 70% power loss is there. In spite of these 5, 5 ml, such a low dilution leads to complete motor, near total motor sensory uh, uh, anesthesia in the right upper limb. Right? 
so now i will ask but little amount of the motor is still there that is because so that he can do exercise for 5 to 7 hours following these blocks and the exercise becomes painless and because of the, these two blocks also associated with the sympathetic block of the upper limb and this also leads to diminution of the edema uh, edema of the upper limb so this is very beneficial block in this patient i am not expecting mortal paralysis motor block but it is more than 70 percent now isko band karo beta open koshish karo kholo usko kholo kholo now i will ask him to do this exercise for five to seven hours till that the sensory anesthesia is there this actually to be ask the patient to elevate the limb